Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and this video I'm going to show you how we set up a multiplayer survival game. Essentially, we have everything that you expect from a survival game, I think, similar to items that you can pick up. For example, here we have a full drag and droppable inventory. As you can see, I didn't really bother putting icons on them. But you can see that here, for example, I have an axe in my hand. I can use the axe. You can see in the bottom left, we have hunger and health. And you can see when I cut down a tree, we'll get more wood out of it. You can see this wood stacks. You can drop them again as well. And everything, of course, works in multiplayer. You also have consumables. So you can see here I have an apple in my hand. You technically can't see it. It's a little out of screen. But when I right click, you can see it consumes the apple and I got more hunger. Uh, and yeah, so we essentially have a full little survival game here with dynamic resource spawning and so on and so forth. I use the Sinti asset similar to the last one, which is the Sinti Polygon starter pack from that is free on the Unity asset store. And I can greatly recommend that. So I hope you are going to enjoy the series. Let me know in the comments what else you'd also like to see in this series. We'll be going through things such as, of course, in this video, the basic setup and movement, uh, as well as in the next one, setting up the player and animating. We'll be setting up all the inventory stuff. We'll also be making the actual items, you know, with physics, picking them up and so on, as well as dropping items. We'll be able to equip stuff in our hand. As you can see, we can switch between them here if i take these down here you can see we can switch between the stuff that we have in hand and that all works nice and dandy and as well as the tools that you're able to use the consumables you're able to well consume the ability to also you know as you saw before hit resources they do a little popping animation and they will break eventually um, as well as maybe we could make a little bit of a building system or maybe a storage chest or something like that let me know in the comments this will be very community driven so what you'd like to see i'd like to make uh, and so yeah please enjoy now this time around, contrary to my FPS series, I'm going to start all the way from the bottom bottom, just so we don't confuse any people. First of all, I've already imported Sinti's Polygon Starter Pack. This is on the asset store, it's completely free, and you can just import it. One of the things that you do need to do early though, is we need to convert the materials. As you can see, they are pink. I'm in a URP project right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select them all, go to Edit, Rendering, Materials, and Convert Select the Materials to URP, and click Proceed. And as you can see, now they look correct. We need to do this for all materials found in the project. So I'm just going to go select them again, Materials, convert to URP and same with the miscellaneous ones. This should now work. Now if we go to the prefabs, you should be able to see that now they look correct and no longer pink all the objects down here in the bottom. One of the other things I just want to say is, first of all, remember to go and join the Pernet Discord server. It's a very active server, wonderful community already. Even though we're still very young, I think we're around 230 members strong right now. You can also leave suggestions, small talk, and for that sake, we of course try and help everybody in here as best to our ability. So if you like, please do go join the server. The link will be in the description and in the top of the comments. And also remember to always go and check out the documentation. It should really go over a lot of very useful things. There's this whole uh, series, essentially a list on getting started with Pernet, and I can really recommend it, even though I'll try and go through a lot of the things in these videos too cool all of that out the way first things first in the description i'll leave a link to this player controller it's the same one that i used in my first person shooter series and essentially i just will i'll just be using it to copy from this is a single player movement script for the player um and essentially i just want to set up the player with movement in single player first and then we can always move it to multiplayer so going into just our models prefab so on i just want to find some of the ground that they already have built in here I'm just going to scale this way up. Let's do something like five times the size, just so we have sort of a, a ground to work off of with a mesh collider. Let's just move it down a little bit so that zero is at the top of it. Something like that should work fine. And now let's make the player. I'll first of all make uh, just an environment empty game object, just so we can move that in there. And now let's make the player. So I'm going to make an empty game object. I'm going to call this the player. I'm going to move him to zero, zero, zero as well. And now let's make the script. So I'll make the folders for pretty much everything. I'll make a, a materials folder. I'll make a prefabs folder. Oops. I'll make a script folder. And of course you can make any folders that you're interested in making, but I'll just stick to these for now. Make a new script. I'll call this player movement. And I'm gonna open it up immediately in my IDE, which is a writer. Now that we have the script open, bear, bear in mind, I copied it with the player controller name, but I'm just gonna call it player movement here. So I'm just gonna paste it in. Go back here and call it player movement, just so we have the naming uh, fully. There we go. And now that should work. Now let me go back to Unity and let's try and add that to the player that we have here. Let me drag and drop it onto my player. As you can see, a character control has automatically been added with a bit of an offset. So I'm gonna offset him up so that uh, the pivot point is at the very bottom here. I'm gonna make the radius smaller, something like 0.25. And I'll also give him a body. So I'm just gonna put a capsule under him also offset that by one, make it 0 0.5 on the X and the set. And there we go, now that should align. And let's also remove the collider from 
the body object. So I'm just going to call this body. Uh, and we can also quickly make a material for this body just so we can see it a little bit better. So this is play a test material, whatever we want to call it. Drag and drop that onto the body. Give it the default checkered pattern. Maybe tile that two by two and I'll make it reddish and let's move it. There we go. So now we have a symbol looking player here and you can also reference the player camera directly in here. And as I hit play, you can see I, oops, camera does not stick to the player. Oh, of course, I'm sorry. Right now, for now, we just child the camera. There we go, to the player. Completely forgot that in my own setup. Just gonna put it up here, up around his head, and there we go. Now we move around. As you can see, we can look around, we can look up and down, and yeah, we can move. So now we successfully have a player moving, but yet there's no multiplayer yet. So first things first, we'll need to import Pernet. By doing this, we go to the package manager, and we go into the documentation of Pernet. Go to guides, to installation and setup, and you'll see this link here which is the one I'm going to be using. You can also do it from the asset store uh, or you can also import it as a package from this page, but this is not very recommended. I recommend typically using the Git package manager, makes it easier or the asset store one. It might just be a few versions behind. Now going in here into my assets, we can go to the Git URL and we can add that and we can just hit install. If you want to be on the developer branch, you can hit write dev instead of release here by the end. This is, can of course mean more things could be prone to break or hasn't been tested properly, but it would also mean you get features as early as possible. So it's really up to you which one that you want to go with. I'll just go with dev for my case. With Pernet in the project, let's set our scene up for some network. So I'm going to go and I'll create an empty game object and I'll just call this network manager, for example. Can put it in 000. I just like that. And here I'm going to add the network manager component to it. Now, first things first, we've got to select some network rules. And as video is going over this for this sake, I'm just going to select the unsafe rule set. And we also need some network prefabs, in which case I can just hit this new button where we'll have created some network prefabs for us and automatically populated. And that's really it. We're ready to go with networking now. So, for example, if you go and hit start now, you should see that you've started as server and started as client. That's why they're green, which means we've started as host. But now, obviously, we need the player set up for networking as well. Let's go into the player movement script and just make this into a network behavior. Now, this immediately means that now it's technically somewhat ready for networking, but there are some things that we have to do. First of all, we can override the onSpawned method, like so. And what we can do is we can do uh, enabled equals to is owner. This means that if we are the owner, the component will be enabled. If we're not, it won't be enabled. Another thing is we probably also want to handle a lot of the stuff that we do uh, in start right now. We probably want to handle, uh, have handle on onSpawned. And same for uh, on disable that we're doing right now. So we could do on despawn as well. So what we can do here is if we're not the owner, we'll just want to return because we don't care much about what happens to other people, but we care about what happens to our player. So I can copy and paste the logic here from undisabled in there, which means that the mouse should not be unlocked. And same really goes for the start method here. So let's take this out and let's go into the unspawn and say if we are not the owner, we'll return like so. And then we can run the logic in here that we wanted to run. Um, cool. This should essentially have movement working. However, there's still the whole camera part of the ordeal. What we can do for now is we can, uh, if we're not the owner as well, we can also just destroy the camera just to make sure that we don't have two cameras. So what we can do is we can call destroy on the player camera game object to make sure that we destroy any cameras on other players. And this should essentially have us working with some first level of network. So let me go and make a prefab out of the player. So I'll drag and drop him into the prefabs folder, uh, remove him from the scene. And you can now see in the network's prefabs, you can now see the player should have been added to this automatically. On the network manager or anywhere really, we can add a player spawn. And here we can drag and drop the player into it. And we can, of course, also add some spawn points. So let me go and add that to the environment. I'll call this spawn points. And let me just have this be point one. We can maybe tag that with like a yellow little diamond thing. Can, that can be point one. This can be point two. And you can make as many spawn points as you want for this default player spawner. Let me just go and drag these into the network manager. So point one and point two. There we go. Uh, cool. And now when we hit play, the player should be spawned and we should be able to control him. There we go. There we go. So now we have a player that's been spawned and he works fully as intended. Now, let me show you also very quickly before we end this video, uh, just to confirm that of course the multiplayer is working, is how you'd go about testing it. For this, I typically use a tool called Perilsync. And some a lot of people have asked about what this is. If you just search for Perilsync and you find the git, here it is. And we can just go to releases, find the most latest release and find the Unity package here. What it allows you to do is it essentially allows you to copy your editor. Now, some people don't like using Parallel Sync. Unity does have something built in called Multiplay, which you can use. I'm not too familiar with using it, and I really like the freedom of having two editors, but it's really just a preference thing. Um, Pernet should work fine with both regardless. You can see now that we have Parallel Sync in the project, this little window is up here. We can go to Clones Manager, and I can just drag it over here, and I can hit Create a New Clone. And what it'll essentially do now is it'll clone the whole editor for me. 
when it's done doing that, I can hit to open the clone. And in that case, we should essentially have two editors open. So I'll hit to open the in new editor here and I'll just wait for it to open. Here we go. Now our clone is essentially open and you'll see back here, you can always see it on the name. So my pernet survival tutorial and pernet survival tutorial underscore clone underscore zero, which means it's my first clone. If you go into network manager, you'll now see that the clone will say it starts as client and the server will say that it starts as host. This is because of the starting flags here. And again, other videos cover this more. I just want you to understand the basics. So if I now start up here, on the server, you can now see we're fully connected. I go onto the clone and I hit start as well. And there we go. Now you can see that we have two players here. But one thing you might notice, let's try and see if we can make it happen. Um, it's a little hard to see which way they're looking, but I hope we can make it work. See if I run all around him, he doesn't see us moving. Essentially, we're standing still for him. I can walk all the way over here in the corner. Actually, I can jump off the map. Let me do that. I jump off the map, go onto this other editor, and you can see the guy is still standing right here. This is because we're doing nothing to actively sync it right now. So if I just go onto the clone and make sure when you're using parallel sync, only ever edit in your main one, go into the prefabs, onto the player, and all you have to do is add the network transform component. And it's really as easy as that. If I now go ahead and hit play again on the server, I hit play again on the clone, you should now see that he should be able to see us move around. So yes, I jump around, move around, everything works just fine. And the same goes for both really. This guy moves way back here. You can see now he's way over here and it's working as intended. So cool, it's really that easy getting started with multiplayer. Now in future videos, we'll get it even nicer and get it going even better. But hopefully this already works for you and you already have something functioning in multiplayer. Hope you enjoyed. I hope the video makes sense and that you learned something new. Please do leave a like, comment and subscribe. It really does help a lot. And I just hope that you have a wonderful day.